with projects, with regrets, but we are not dealing with reality as it is. So what we call Shivaism is, is this, is dealing with the reality as it is. That is, not to acquire a new knowledge, but to get rid of beliefs, certainties, uh, ideologies, theories, which are not based on anything. And this is very difficult to do, because we are conditioned for dreaming since millennia. We are conditioned for inventing new possibilities that we never reach. So Shivaism is about this. Now, when we say it comes from Kashmir, it's only because about 1,000 years ago, some very uh, clever interpreters re-explained this tradition. But it is not originally coming from this area that we today call Kashmir. In fact, it comes from a more, much more southern area of India. But, you know, it comes from the human world. Because once again, if we stop with this idea that India is there, Romania is here, uh, whatever countries are, we are once again cutting. And the cutting is not because the world is cut, the cutting is because we think in terms of separation all the time. And this way of thinking has always brought an impossible world to live in. It's always been terrible, full of conflict, full of war, full of fightings, full of dominations, only because we are looking at things with uh, a scattered mind. So when we're talking about Kashmir, once again, uh, forget about the localization. And when we are talking about Shivaism, forget about, as I say, uh, smoky mystic affairs. There's nothing to do with this. So, after saying all this, uh, what is it about? So it's mainly about the relationship in between what we could call the pot and the wall, the object and the subject, the persons and the world. You might have noticed that it's pretty difficult to change something in this world. Many of us have been trying since centuries, and we are still about in a <coughs> difficult situation. So, the idea, or we could say the realization, the clear realization came that it is not possible to change the world. The only possibility is maybe to bring a change within one's life. One's life doesn't mean external life. It means the way one's live is or her perceptions. Because whatever happens externally in our lives, it always comes to the same thing, is how do I relate to what is happening? How do I feel what is going on in my life? So we have set up moral moralities, ethics, but it doesn't change much. It's always come to the same point. How do I feel? What is my relationship, in fact, to myself. And now comes a big, big, big question. What is this I who can be in relationship to 
to myself. Is there a difference in between the, the part or the thing or the function which is living and the process of living? Do you follow? Mm -hmm. Is there a difference in between the two? You know, sometimes uh, in almost whole traditional spiritual method, they are doing what they call meditation. And most of the time they start with a very simple, well, they call it simple, they say just watch your breath. And when you watch your breath, it becomes very obvious, very quickly, that you are bringing a separation in between the watcher and the breath. So you can feel your breath where it is going on, either on the abdomen or in the chest, the upper chest. And we make a separation as if we were forgetting then that the one who is watching is the same as the one who is breathing. Of course. But just into what is called the, the most important thing regarding meditation, into this very practice we are bringing separation again. So it's not so easy at all to feel that, how could we say, I am the breath and I am the watcher. If we accept that, it means the watcher is the breath. That is, the watching is the movement. The watching is the relationship. It is not that there is somebody which is watching something. It is that the watching itself is the link. Can you follow that? So, it requires that what I call me who wants to achieve something, this me vanish, vanishes away. We, we stop giving it importance. It also requires that the goal we are inventing vanishes away. It means there is nobody who is searching and there is nothing to search. But there is a search. The search is completely non-personal. I'm going, maybe I'm going a little bit fast going into this topic. Uh, but the big, big question is, what is the nature of the link which is linking everything together? What is the nature of the link? So, Link in Sanskrit means it, it is the, it's the meaning of this word yoga. Here we say yoga. Yoga in Sanskrit is yoga. So this is the meaning of of. It can be translated as the nature of unity. So this tradition, which is called Kashmir Shivaism is only, and I really insist on the term only, is only interested in finding out what is the nature of the link in between everything. And what makes this life together. One of the reasons it's very difficult to go into that once again, is because 
we have this very whole habit, this very strong conditioning, which does not belong to any person in particular. It's the human conditioning, which is centuries old, who says the conditioning of the human mind, which is centuries old. So, this conditioning is about always living a fragmented life. Not only that, but to, to want for a life to be even more fragmented. That is, once again, the moment we want to reach something, it brings a fragmentation. <coughs> so it's, it's very tricky because many of us, we want to reach, we want to achieve something. And we give the importance to this something. We never put the question of what is achieving. And you might have noticed that if unfortunately one day you have reached one goal that you have decided before, when you have reached that goal, you have to put another one. If you don't put another one, your life is very boring all of a sudden. And uh, it goes like that, days after days, nights after nights, years after years, until we at last reach the same point for everyone, that it is the death, we die. That's maybe the only place where we can agree. So Yoga has put this big, big question is, can we find an agreement before dying? Can we all be into a quality of togetherness before dying? I'm not saying that can we all be together. Because being together, once again, means you take one person, you plus one person, one person, you bring them together. Nothing to do with this. It is, can we live the quality of togetherness? When we come to the symbolic aspects of tradition, because that, I don't know why this attracts many, many people. People love symbols. And symbols are, once again, most of the time, bringing division. So, it goes like that. It says that, uh, thank you. It says that within each and every person, there is a kind of discussion, dialogue. So, I'm not talking about this permanent movement in the mind, you know, which is turning and turning and turning until you don't even notice it. I'm talking when you clearly, with intelligence, when you put yourself on important questions, and when you try to, to go deep into the questions, questions like, what is love? What is the meaning of life? What is intelligence? What is relationship? What is my place into the society? You know, that kind of, of questions. <clears throat> so, when we go into that kind of questions, Shivaism has symbolized this inner quest or inner discussion has a part is questioning. Now, the part which is questioning is not the ordinary thought. It has to be a burning thought, a burning desire. If it's not burning, it's just nothing. That's no importance at all. The, 
the second, the next second you've been thinking for something else. But something which is burning. Uh, so there is this spot within us, kind of very strong desire of understanding, which puts a very intense, we could say even pure question. What is love? Not about is that man or that woman will have a loving relationship with him or her or is it something else? This, you know, this is childish. Uh, compared to the, the intensity of what is this? What is this, this link that can appear in between human beings? What is the nature of this link? So there is this burning desire, this strong questioning. This is one side of the inner relationship. And on the other side, Shivaism said, there is something which knows the answer. But the way we question has to be very open in case the answer is totally out of the blue, in case the answer does not correspond to anything we already know or think about, thought about. So, is it possible to put an intense question and at the same time being completely open, not grasping for a particular answer that would satisfy, that would satisfy, but just